Hey witches, welcome back to my channel. This is Hectaria, and in this video I'm going to be talking about wands and my take on them, how I use them in my practice. Um, so, I guess getting into this. I view wands as associated with the third eye, okay? So before we get into this video, I do recommend that you go back and watch the video I posted recently about using your third eye. Uh, I titled the video of A Master Witch Reveals the True Secrets of Psychic and Magical Empowerment, Third Eye Activation. And you could find that on my channel in my playlist. Um, and the spells and lessons of magic playlist okay and I was talking about using your third eye and how that helps your magic a lot okay and when it comes to wands I'm going to show y'all a couple of mine um this one is a wand that I made out of, I make wands, and I've always made my own wands, um, even before I got like this crafty with it, where I was putting, where I put crystals embedded in the wand, and different sigils painted on it, and things. Um, I uh, would just get like a stick and, you know, a pretty good length when I'm holding it and I would just use it like just a plain stick with nothing else uh, for my magic. But anyway, um, I did that when I was younger and before I really got into crafting things. Um, and built up my skill level I just use a plain stick that's fine to use um, but I made this wand a few years ago and it's made with willow wood from a willow tree and it's the wand that I made for my Hecatean magic okay uh, and it has quartz crystals in the tip and different spells and stuff are written in different alphabets and all of that here's another wand that I made this one has uh, selenite okay and this is a, a wand for lunar magic and it has a moonstone I don't know if y'all can see it in the end right there and this one's made from uh, oak wood so I use this one mostly for lunar magic or for healing spells now when we're talking about wands, now that I showed y'all a couple of mine, another thing that I use for like a wand is this vulture foot talon that I have that I collected and harvested from a naturally dead vulture. Um, the vulture is one of my totem animals as well as with the owl. Um, 
and so I have that too. And I use it, uh, you know, just holding it as a wand sometimes. And the vultures' energies, you can look that up, what the vulture represents. Um, usually when I want to know what an animal's power is or what type of power is associated with using an animal's uh, body parts and bones and different things. Um, you can just look up easily online the totem meaning of that animal itself and that'll give you an idea of the type of magical energy that you can use and harness with their body parts and bones and stuff like that. Um, and then just use your uncommon sense like a foot bone or a foot itself would be like, you know, what do you, what do you use your hand for? Okay, if you're dealing with a skull, um, you know, what what goes on with that? It's thinking, it's intelligence. If you're going to be using the, you know, just whatever bone or body part you're using, just think about that part of the body and what influences are associated with that. Okay, I did not mean to get off topic on this, but... Um, I'm just pointing that out because that's why I use this vulture claw as a wand because to me a wand is an extension of like your hand it's an extension of what controls and manipulates and directs energy okay and it's the energy of your third eye your creative um, faculty of your third eye so once again, watch the video that I've already posted about the third eye activation because that all plays a huge part in how I utilize wands. Now, I'm just going to look at the notes that I made so I make sure I can cover every point in this video. I say that it's associated with creation magic. It's used for invoking forces and spirit and powers and energies and directing them. Um, you know, wands can be made out of different materials. You can you can make wands out of wood, out of metal, and even just like a crystal, like a long crystal point, you can use as a wand. You know, here's another piece of selenite that I have that I sometimes just utilize this as a wand for healing magic in and of itself um, because selenite is very cleansing and to me healing isn't so much about recovering as it is about getting rid of the sickness and cleansing sickness away okay um, and then your body will naturally heal because the natural state of the body is to be in health. Okay? It's sickness that is, um, you know, interimposing on the body. And it needs to be sent away. All right? So that's how I view cleansing work and healing work. But um, I also said that wands are used for magic at a long distance. Um, it helps project your will. It amplifies your intentions. Um, on the topic of what wands are made out of, you know, it could be metal, wood, crystals, or a combination of any of those combined. Um, you know, you can use an animal bone or a body part or something like that too. Um, but on that note, each of those materials has a different energy and a different influence okay when it comes to the willow wood that's associated with goddess hecate all right that's why i made the hecate and wand out of that um selenite's a good crystal for healing and for moon magic that's why i used it in my lunar wand so just think about the types of things and materials that your wands are made out of um if you're just using a piece of wood or a stick, 
you know, look up the meaning of the energies of that type of wood or that tree or bush that you obtained it from. And, you know, they're each going to have a different type of energy and a different influence. Um, that's just already there, kind of dormant in the material itself okay so be aware of that aspect of this but this video is not really supposed to be a breakdown of um wands in that way i just want to talk about how to use them in general um which is going to be the same for pretty much any type of wand that you have and it's basically kind of to summarize it's like a I don't know what they're called but you know like a what is that called you know like with an orchestra the conductor has that little wand that they hold and they're like you know doing the gesturing of everything uh, that is pretty much how I view a wand. It's like a extension of your hand, an extension of your will of directing and controlling whatever energies or magic or spirits that you're working with, okay? Um, so it's just like a gesturing tool that you use um, that helps you in that way of directing and focusing the energy okay so it's just like when you're talking and you gesture with your hands or something like that it's not really about uh anything special it's just the fact that it's helping you get your point across okay that's how a wand works to me uh there's a type of a language that wands speak that isn't about words or vocal conscious communication it's like a subconscious energy um language if you will vibration that you're doing when you're using a wand so whenever i'm using my wand i will for instance if i'm casting a circle i'll use it and i'll draw like a pinnacle in each direction okay that's one thing I mean, really, like I said, with, with the third eye video, hopefully you have watched that before you're watching this. Um, there is no limit to what you can use your third eye to do or create or for in your magic. And so with the wand, it gets hard to pinpoint things because there's no limit to it. You can use it however you want in a um, in accordance and in league with and alignment with your third eye. Um, so if I wanted to visualize, um, just as an example, if I wanted to put up a protection around my room or my house, I could use my wand and not have to really cast a circle with any words, but I could just with my third eye I can just, with my third eye, visualize um, the magic itself as, let's say, like a ring of fire around my room or my house. And then I'll use the wand to gesture as I'm visualizing that. Okay? I hope this makes sense to y'all. It's like... Uh, it's once again like when you're talking to somebody and you use your hand to gesture and get your point across. The wand is that tool to use along with your third eye. Okay, so as you're visualizing it with your third eye in the creative faculty, in that projective way, the wand is used as a gesturing tool of what you're doing with it. Okay. So I hope that makes sense to y'all. That's how I use wands. Um, if I was casting a spell for someone at a long distance, 
I'll usually, you know, let's say I like have a candle here burning on my altar. Just pretend this is a candle. <laughs> Use your third eye and imagine that this is a candle burning. And uh, this is really just a candle snuffer that I made with a piece of bone. An old broken bell. But just pretend like this is a candle burning on my altar and I'm doing, let's say, a um, money spell for somebody. Okay? I'll have this burning on my altar, you know, with their information and everything set up for a money spell. Once that's all going, I'll take my wand and I'll do some gestures, you know, whatever I'm visualizing, which is usually like taking the energy of that spell and then I will gesture you know around the candle like I'm taking the energy with that intention and then I will usually I know where the person is that I'm doing magic for I know where they live and depending on what direction they live in from where I am located when I'm casting the spell I will go outside and face that direction that they are from where I am and I'll use my third eye and the wand to then send that energy to them long distance like that okay um so that's just some examples of how to, you can use the wand as a gesturing tool for your third eye and it really does help okay it really does um, you can use your hand for the same thing, but it is more powerful when you use a wand, um, as far as, um, I have experience in my practice. So, another thing I wrote on here is that wands combine all the elements together. In my opinion, I don't just use wands to represent one of the elements. Like some people only associate them with fire or with air. Uh, I don't do that. I think that wands really are a combination of all the elements, um, especially when they're wood, because wood is, uh, well, the wood itself is the earth element. Um, they start off, plants start off as a seed buried in the earth. So that's the earth element aspect. And then its physical body is earth. But as wood grows, it's combining elements of air because the leaves breathe in and breathe out. So trees breathe, plants breathe. That's the air element. Um, and they feed on sunlight. Okay? So that's the fire element that's incorporated into plants and trees. Um, the water element, you know, they drink water through their roots. Okay? And then spirit. Well, plants and trees are alive, so they have a spirit, okay? And these are called dryads in the Greek mythology. Um, so to me, your wands that are made out of wood are very much um, a combination of all the elements together, including spirit. Uh, so how I use them in my practice is like that. With that in mind, I use it for anything. But like I did say, whatever materials that it's made out of specifically is going to really hone in on that specific type of influence. So I use the willow for goddess Hecate, for example, because the willow is a tree associated with her. Um, if I was going to make a wand for... Uh, like solar magic specifically if I wanted it for that specific type of energy more honed in I would use you know 
the herb or the tree that's associated with the god Apollo is bay laurel. So I would use a branch from a tree like that uh, and things like that. So just think about exactly what you want your wand to be powerful in. Once again, though, it doesn't matter what kind of wand you have. You can use it for anything. But the materials that it's made from are going to really hone in, you know, what it excels at with its magic. Okay. So I hope that makes sense to y'all. And... Um, you know, you can buy pre-made wands, I make and sell wands, um, through Facebook and all of that. I'm trying to work on another shop, um, because for those of you who did not know, my Etsy shop got shut down because they told me because of the witchcraft items I was selling and that they had changed their policy. Um... And that was last year. So I have not made a new website or a new website shop since then. But I have continued to sell and make things through Facebook and PayPal. Um, but I'm working on starting a new website shop on uh, the website uh, Shopify, I think. So I'll be doing that very soon I think I'm still looking at other different websites that I might use um, but we'll see but even so I still do sell and make things just through Facebook and PayPal so I'm not really rushing that process I'm looking at the different means which I can use um, now, I also want to share an oracle from Goddess Hecate that I got last night from her, and it's about wands. So, it's something I posted on Facebook, so once again, let me look on here. So this is something that Hecate told me about wands last night. And so it's, it's an oracle from her and this is what she said. And if you find yourself in the company of shadows, take up thy wand of creative will. Thrust it forth into the void and compel the witless shades to dance along to your symphony of incantations and commands. That by your cunning mystery, you shall form a path through the chaos, and none shall overtake you on your course. Hecate speaks the wand and the will. So, you know, the wand is really about your creative will. Um, which is used by the faculty of your third eye, okay, your imagination, and it's creative faculty, not just imagining something, and then that's it, but imagining something, putting energy behind it and into it, that represents something that you're actually going to physically do as well and follow through with, okay? And things like that once again I you know advise you watch my video on the third eye activation because I broke all of that down in there on the third eye and how to really use it um, but the wand really is just an extension of that so it, it's a representative an extension of your own willpower your own creative will and your ability to command reality based on that okay so you know once again really it's just a gesturing tool for um the direction of your creative will and your third eyes magic okay so 
that's my take on wands and how I use them. And once again, you know, that's only going to be limited by your own uh, third eye and your own creative will. You can use it for anything. Um, whatever you visualize with your third eye and its creative function. You can use the wand as your gesturing tool of directing that energy. Okay. So don't feel limited in any way. You can use it however you want. And that's just my take on wands. Okay. I am going to be doing a video on the Athme. And my take on that. So. I guess I'll go ahead and do that next. And I have some more videos that I still need to do for you guys. Okay. But I'll see you all on the next videos. Hail to the witches and blessed be.